So today I will talk about relation between scattering angle in center of mass frame and laboratory frame. That means I want to know that how scattering angle is related uh, in center of mass frame and the laboratory frame of reference. So for this, let us draw a diagram. These are the two particles. They scattered in this way, and uh, v1 v its velocity and v2 is its velocity in the laboratory frame. Means v1 and v2 are the velocities in laboratory frame after collision. And as I know from the early lecture that this seems to be moving like this. This seems to be moving like this in the laboratory frame, sorry, uh, in the center of mass frame. So this is their motion in the center of mass frame. It is V1 prime and it is V2 prime be their velocities in the center of mass frame v1 prime and v2 prime be their velocities in center of mass frame right and they always seems to move in the opposite direction in the center of mass frame so that means this is the angle alpha 1 and let me call this as alpha 2 and this alpha 1 is the scattering angle in center of mass frame and this is the recoil angle in center of mass frame similarly this this is theta and this is phi this theta is the scattering angle in center of, sorry in the laboratory frame and uh, this phi is the recoil angle in laboratory frame. As I know that when elastic collision will occur, particles seems to move in the opposite direction after collision when seen from the laboratory frame of reference, sorry, when seen from the center of mass frame of reference. So that means this starts moving in this way. So that means alpha 1 plus alpha 2 is pi, means 180 degrees. So that means, let me call alpha 1 as alpha. So alpha plus, so alpha 2 can be written as pi minus alpha. So that means the alpha and pi minus alpha, this is the scattering angle and this is the recoil angle in center of mass frame. So let me call this as alpha and let me call this angle as pi minus alpha, right? That's what I will do it now. Now, let me resolve the components. So, situation is like this. This is the velocity seems to be like this and it seems to be like this in the and it is the velocity of center of mass and it is the velocity of uh, incident particle after collision in the center of mass frame and it is in the another frame of reference. So that means if I resolve their components, because I can resolve though both the components. So that means if I resolve this component, this is V prime component, 
it has two components it is a uh, if it is b prime then it's making an angle alpha then it is b 1 prime cos of alpha and it is v1 prime sin of alpha similarly i am having this component v it must also must have two components one component as this and another component is this such that this component is if it is v1 then this is v1 cos theta because it is making an angle theta and it is v1 sin of theta let us try to look at it differently so now if i draw a perpendicular form here then its component is this one then if i talk about this this is known as uh, sorry it is v1 right so it is v1 prime because this angle is alpha this angle is theta then i can say that it is v1 cos of alpha and similarly this distance is uh, v and if i draw a perpendicular talk in terms of this then this whole distance is known as v1 cos of theta like this right so that means for motion along x axis for motion along x axis i can say that v1 cos of theta is equal to v1 prime cos of alpha plus v and for motion along y axis let me call this as equation number 1 it is v1 sin theta because both the components are of equal magnitude right if i try to do it here then its component will be up to this and this both will be of so that means v1 sin theta must be equal to v1 sin of alpha right so that means its one component is like this it is this one so this component is v1 prime uh, sin of alpha and similarly if i resolve this then it can be taken up to this one then it is v1 sin of theta so that means these both are equal in magnitude right so let me call this as equation number 2 So therefore, applying two by one, if I use this operation, then what I am getting, I am getting v one sine theta upon v one cos theta is equal to v one prime sine alpha upon v one prime cos alpha plus v. So if I cancel out it then it will become tan theta is equal to it is uh, v prime sin alpha v1 prime sin alpha v1 prime can be taken outside so it is cos alpha plus v by v1 prime this will cancel out with it that means this tangent theta it comes out to be sin alpha upon cos alpha plus v over v1 prime so this is the equation which we are getting and let me call this as equation number 3 but since because these are the magnitudes and if i recall earlier 
calculations that v1 prime its mod it is v1 prime and it is basically if i forward the uh, sign then it is m2 u1 and it is m1 plus m2 and v can be written as v is equal to m1 u1 it is m1 plus m2 then if we put their values then v upon v1 prime it can be written as m1 u1 over m1 plus m2 whole divided by m2 u1 over m1 plus m2 so that means this is equal to m1 u1 over m1 plus m2 into m1 plus m2 divided by m2 u1 so it will cancel out with it and this u1 will cancel out with it so it is m1 over m2 so if i use its value from here in this equation means if i put this equal to this in this equation then equation 3 will become this equation 3 will become tangent theta is equal to sin alpha over cos alpha plus m1 upon m2 so this is a required expression between uh, angle of scattering in central mass frame and angle of scattering in uh, sorry angle of scattering in theta is the angle of scattering in laboratory frame and alpha is angle of scattering in central mass frame so thus i can say that these both depends upon means their masses sorry their scattering angle in laboratory frame and central mass frame depends upon depends upon the masses of the colliding particles right so that's what we are getting from this the relationship now let us discuss a special case as i know that this tangent theta is equal to sin alpha upon cos alpha plus m1 over m2 now i will discuss some special cases first case is that target particle is heavy is very heavy and also we have assumed that target particle is very heavy and it at rest as we have assumed it in the earlier so if it is very heavy then m1 is very much less than m2 or we can say that m1 upon m2 because m2 is very large so that means m1 upon m2 is very much less than 1 or nearly 0 that's the meaning of it because denominator is very large in comparison to denominator so that means it is nearly equal to 0 so that means if i put m1 by m2 is nearly equal to 0 then tangent theta will be written as sin alpha upon cos of alpha using this equation number 4 right that's what we are getting and this is tangent alpha or in nutshell i can say that this 
theta is equal to alpha thus we conclude that when target particle is very heavy very heavy then angle of scattering in lavatory frame is equal to angle of scattering in center of mass frame right that's what we are getting from here now let me discuss the second case second case is if both the particles are of equal mass both the particles are of equal mass that means this m1 must be equal to m2 and it is equal to m then tangent theta is equal to cos alpha over sorry not cos alpha but it is a sin alpha over cos alpha plus m1 over m2 but both are of equal mass then it is sin alpha cos alpha plus m by m it will cancel out so it is uh, yeah it is sin alpha over cos alpha plus 1 and let us try to find out the relationship between alpha and theta so for this let us do a little uh, a trick of uh, trigonometry means sin alpha can be written as 2 sin alpha by 2 cos alpha by 2 and cos alpha can be written as 2 cos square alpha upon 2 minus 1 this is standard relationship for this right and this plus 1 as it is now this will cancel out with it so it is 2 sin square sin alpha upon 2 cos alpha upon 2 whole upon 2 cos square alpha by 2 now this will cancel out with it and 2 will cancel out with this so sin alpha upon 2 upon cos alpha upon 2 that means i can say that this tangent theta is equal to this is the division of this so it is tangent alpha by 2 so i can say that this theta is equal to alpha by 2 right that's what we are getting here means when two colliding particles are of equal mass equal mass then angle of scattering in left frame this is angle of scattering in left frame must be equal to 1/2 half of angle of scattering angle of scattering in center of mass frame that's what we are getting from this special case right so that's all for this lecture and in the next lecture i will talk about the relation between the recoil angle in left frame and scattering angle in center of mass frame right that's how the coil and the scattering angles related to each other in the different frames so that's all for this lecture.